do? I'm right here! Hit me! What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here today to talk about Thrill Housewives of Potomac, Season 8, Episode 6, Tequila, Tears, Texas. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's jump right on into it. So after NECA catches Wendy up, she's like, you're saying you don't know Lebe, yeah, you had her at your daughter's sip and see, and on top of that, you fucking, like, honored her. Uh, Ashley Darby says some shit like, oh, Lebe had, like, a, a gay lay on, like, some, like, headdress or whatever. It's kind of, like, pointing out how it's inconsistent. And how does Miss Wendy respond? By fucking reaching up her sleeve and pulling out some random-ass allegation. This professor tells a lawyer... Oh, were you there? Were you ever there to sip and see? Or were you still in LA smoking crack? And she's like, ah, ha, 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 ha. I'll be all stupid and shit. And it's like, you know, damn off the shoe on the other foot, Wendy would be huffing and puffing and moaning and groaning and all this bullshit. You know what I mean? It's like, what are you doing, Wendy? Like, how's A, this doesn't even make sense. It's not even like, when Brandy Glanville told Kim Richards, at least I'll do crystal meth in the bathroom all night long, bitch. That hit home because Kim does have like a history of like substance abuse or at least like alcoholism. Uh, she and, K and Kyle were like, you bitch, she's sober. But it's like, it wasn't like this random accusation. You know what I mean? It was a drug based accusation for someone with a substance abuse, a history of having substance abuse problems. You know what I mean? And with this, it's like, you're just one professional calling another professional, like, trying to, it's, it's like, what? Like, it just rammed it in track. It didn't seem to, like, make sense. You know what I mean? So, very random. And then afterwards, though, we then get a sudden vibe shift. Because they're like, all right, guys, have some fun. They start dancing. It's really fucking random. It's like, you just went from having Wendy accusing NECA of smoking crack. And now we have fucking Mia dipping her pussy in the pool. All this bullshit. Um... Candace, though, she goes and checks in on NECA. She's like, hey, let me all good. Like, I saw you were really hurt when you were kind of going off, blah, blah, blah. Wendy kind of tries to shut it down a little bit. She's like, Candace is my friend. Like, don't talk about me with her. Like, don't. But Candace wasn't even talking about Wendy with her. She was kind of just checking on NECA, but she wasn't like, hey, what's going on with you and Wendy? Then you can make it better. That wasn't what it was about. You know what I mean? Candace is kind of like, like, there are a few moments when Wendy was like, kind of actively trying to ignore NECA, just kind of, like, whatever, but Candace was really letting that happen. Candace kind of seems to have the door open, so we're seeing that. If, you, if a little, um, can you call it a little rift in that little alliance, the Candace-Wendy kind of vibe? It's like Candace seems more open to NECA, obviously, than Wendy is, you know what I mean? So that's kind of nice to see, like, Candace kind of doing her own thing and whatnot, um, so yeah, then afterwards, the lady segue to getting ready to go out to this little restaurant, go to dinner and whatnot. And while at the table, Robin confirms that she swallows and the ladies react and shit. They're like, why are you swallowing that man? That man's fucking cheating sperm juices. Like, oh my God. Very ugly, very graphic and shit. Uh, Candace says she'd rather get peed on than swallow cum. And it's like, Candace, these women do not like you. Like, girl, keep that shit to yourself. Ashley's nasty ass. Like, we're talking about swallowing still. She's like, oh, you know, just, like, hold it in your mouth. Because they're like, oh, well, if you don't swallow, like, what do you do? Like, when do you, like, go? Like, that just seems so awkward. And Ashley's like, oh, no, you just hold it in your mouth until the man falls asleep and then go dump it out. And the women are like, ew! He's going to marinate and just, like, fuck it. Like, what? It's just very gross. It was like, girl, that sounds disgusting. You know what I mean? Like... If you're gonna do that shit, do it like a second after, like, and you'll, you'll, you'll let your taste buds fucking take it in. Like, girl, it was just disgusting. It was like, ugh! Like, that's what all these reacted. They're like, okay, that seems like the worst way to, like, approach that. It was so fucking funny. Uh, Mia reveals that she's eaten ass before. Giselle says that Karen acts like she doesn't have balls in her mouth, but she clearly does. All this bullshit. Very just, all this sex shit. The vibe gets a lot lighter, though. Uh, NECA then discusses some of her infertility issues, and Wendy's trying to ignore NECA, like, really obviously, but Candace, she's engaged in some conversations. Uh, they're both talking about how they really want to have, like, a twin, like, a boy and a girl, and then just call it a day, like, just one pregnancy, two babies, boy and a girl, just be done, and kind of, like, that'd be the dream, essentially, just kind of chit-chatting and whatnot. Um, once we're back at the hotel, everyone gathers in Robin's suite, 
Ken, and she trades her heels for Robin's slides. And Robin, she reacts in the confessional. She's like, girl, you were just popping off, like, about, in, about me in the press and on social media. And now you're wearing my fucking slippers? Like, what the fuck? So that happens. And then before going to bed and after, like, kind of vibing and whatnot, Candace, she invites Robin to kind of have a chit-chat the next day. And Robin agrees. It's now day two, and Ashley has this phenomenal breakfast setup. It looks amazing, to be honest. Like, it looks really good. To be honest, they had some avocado toast out, and I'm like, well, it would be kind of soggy by the time, like, the women get to it. You know what I mean? And not soggy in a good way. Like, like fucking, oh, some, like, soggy fucking butter toast. Ooh, girl, I'll fuck that shit. But some soggy, like, avocado. Like, mm. like, you know what I mean? So, I don't know, but it looked bomb as fuck. Um, Robin, she tells Ashley and Giselle about how, you know, Candace is kind of, like, act like nothing happened, everything was all good, and blah, 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 and it's kind of weirding her out a little bit. And once the other ladies join them, Ashley introduces the first activity of the day, which is just them painting their vaginas on easels. She's like, it's gonna be a great, like, experience to, like, connect to your womanhood and all that bullshit. Karen's like, I don't want to do that. And Ashley's like, it could be an interpretation. It could be like a flower. All this bullshit. Um, before painting begins, though, Karen addresses Robin. And she brings up how, okay, Robin, you want to open up and get honest with like this one section of the group, about half the women in the group. And in doing so, Robin's essentially dividing the group. But Robin's like, you know, I'm not doing any of that and I only open up to the people who ask about me and who will, like, show concern. And Candace is like, well, what about when, you know, I texted you and you, like, didn't reply? And Robin's like, are you fucking kidding me? Because again, Robin's like, you were going in on me, like, just a couple months ago and now you're trying to act like things all hunky-dory. And yeah, Robin's basically popping off at this point. Karen says that Robin needs to be held accountable. And Robin stands up and she's like, what do you do, Karen? Are you gonna kick my butt? Are you gonna whoop my butt? It's like, Karen is 60 years old. You're asking if, you want, if like, she's gonna whoop your ass? Like, Robin, she's saying like, for you to be held accountable. Well, what do you wanna do? I'm right here, hit me! It's like, girl. And in the confessional, Karen, she starts being like, Robin is just so down to ride for one. She reminds me of those women in these like polygamy camps who like with their bonnets and shit. This, this whole little fucking thing. Karen trying to be funny with their fucking little skits and Karenisms and shit. Anyways, ladies are really going in on Robin. Just got, not really going in on her, but asking questions. It's like a fucking press conference. And again, Robin is just not having it. And they ask like, okay, well then why was there no aired interaction between you and Giselle? Fuck telling the whole group, why didn't you have a sit down with Giselle on the show? And Giselle's like, we did talk. It wasn't on the show, but we did have a conversation. But Karen calls bullshit straight up. And then, well, kind of in the heat of the moment, if you will, Candace asks Robin, well, and why didn't you read any of the text messages between Robin and the lady? Like, no, no part of you was curious about that? Why didn't you want to read those? And Robin's like, well, no, I don't really care. And, you know, Juan didn't even have the text messages at that point. He's always, like, clearing his phone, always deleting everything. And everyone's like, that's not suspicious at all, Robin. Uh, so, yeah, and at that point, the pussy painting activity is a no-go. So, at one point, uh, during all the fucking commotion, after the fucking easel was like, can we just paint pussies? Like, please. So, yeah, that's just not happening at this point. It's kind of basically lost the time for that. And Ashley segues to the next little activity. It's either going to be a distillery or a cowboy boot shop. And the women just have to, like, um, select from, like, a hat, totally random. The distillery group is Karen, Candace, Wendy, and Mia. The boots group is Ashley, Giselle, Robin, and NECA. And after some shopping for boots and whatnot, NECA should put the ladies in on how, you know, she moved to Maryland just one week before her wedding. And, you know, she was planning it from LA, but she wasn't like popping in to the DMV often enough. So she hated her wedding. She's like, it was just horrendous, blah, blah, blah. Nothing went well, it was a mess. But she has her little opportunity to do a little redo when they do their um, like traditional Nigerian wedding. I'm like, why the fuck do you plan a wedding from LA just not pop? It's like. It's not even like a destination wedding. It's just fucking a wedding in a different state. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. This, but she knows it was a bad move. I get like, why don't you just have it in LA? Like, 
I don't fucking know. They then express how Karen, Wendy, and Candace really went in so nastily on Robin. All this bullshit. We then flash to the distillery group, and you know, afterwards, they're kind of outside, kind of chilling. And Mia makes this comment about Wendy's mom, because there's a fucking like raven or crow, and like, ooh. And Mia's just like, that ain't your mama, is it? And everyone's just like, <laughs> And people were like, oh, Mia wouldn't like you to talk about her mom, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, this was clearly a joke that Mia made to Wendy's face. You know what I mean? No, it was a shady joke, yeah, but it's not like a malicious joke. And I would venture to say that if Wendy were not at that table, I think Karen and Candace would have like smiled, at, uh, at least smiled a little bit, to be honest with you. I think they held back because Wendy was right fucking there. Um, so yeah, cute little funny moment, just the, the timing of it, you know what I mean? But yeah, Wendy was not really here for it. Then she's really emotional. She talks about how, you know, her God-fearing mother who gave up so much to like raise her and Ivy and whatnot. She's being maligned in this way. And she starts actually fucking crying. And she says that, you know, she can't be cool with someone who attacks her mom. And it's like, Okay, so you're like, oh, she's saying my mom has a shrine. But the thing is, if it's that fucking serious and you feel that, like, strongly about this shit, like, what's the... Why aren't you denying it? And she also says, that, you know, all this talk about shrines and shit. It's, she's like, Catholics have shrines, and it's not a big deal. So it's, like, very obscure. But it's like, okay, those are... That's not the type of vibe we're talking about. You know, they have, like, um, ofrendas, like, the, with the Day of the Dead, you know, like... Kind of like shrine vibe with like offerings, like the spirits and whatnot. But is it like a malicious shrine? Is it like a a holy shrine or something like, like paid tribute? Is it like a malicious, like for malintent, you know what I mean? So you can touch on that and whatnot. There's the everyone, they relink at this restaurant afterwards. And while sitting down, NECA discusses, you know, her wedding at the water gates and, you know, how it was a disaster. And she's looking forward to her traditional Nigerian wedding. I'm just kind of talking about that and like, the cultural aspect, and Wendy is visibly mute as NECA is going on about this shit. And I get it, you know, Wendy doesn't like her, but the, uh, it just makes it feel like, it's just weird that, you know, it's like, girl, like, you can at least look unbothered, like, damn. Um, NECA then mentions how some people can, like, pay for honorary titles nowadays, because she mentions how her husband, he's like, has some honorary title, and I don't fucking know. But there's other people can, like, pay for those nowadays. I was like, well, how do we know that your husband didn't pay for his? <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, whatever. Um, there's prompts a conversation about the blue checkmark bullshit. Um, they say, Robin, actually, she brings up how, oh, well, Karen and Mia, they're the only ones who, like, subscribe to Twitter Blue. And Mia owns that shit, but Karen's like, no, I didn't. I never did that shit. But they prove her wrong. He's claiming innocence. I don't know. It's just kind of a little funny moment. Um, then Mia asks what's up with Ashley's divorce. And, you know, Ashley says that still, like, it's on the process of everything. They're working on the logistics and whatnot. She says they're kind of working out the custody bullshit. But in the confessional, Candace questions if Ashley's even fucking actually filed for divorce. Uh, and afterwards, Mia gets a little messy. And she's like, well, speaking of Michael, Candace, isn't he still suing you? What's up with that? I'm just, like, bringing that up. Candace says that, you know, I'm not discussing that at this time with this group, blah, blah, blah. And Robin, she's like, can we get a list of what, you know, we can and cannot discuss? And Candace is like, no, you can be dense another time. We can be dense another time. And so, yeah, it's a little bit of a moment between them. Candace says, you know, it's a legal matter, so, like, I'm going to stay silent. And, you know, she basically says, just like you should have stayed silent at the reunion, because at the reunion, Robin made some... Side eye worthy comments about Juan's lawsuit and what the shit going on between him and the university. Um, so she kind of throws that in Robin's face a little bit. Robin says, Oh, Juan, the situation with Juan and that lawsuit bullshit had nothing to do with him getting fired. Which Wendy questions because she's like, A Title IX violation has nothing to do with why, like, uh, a coach got fired from an institution. Just kind of talking about, like, why exactly he got fired when he explains that Title IX, Title IX protects, you know, 
people on the basis of gender, sexuality. So yeah, Wendy goes on about that real quickly, but Robin, she just goes on and on about how, you know, the state of Maryland is defending Juan, they're representing Juan, and you know why? Because they know this whole thing is bullshit, he did nothing wrong, and she, did, she divulges all these details, she's like, Oh, he called the athletic director right away. He was contacting the university police, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, okay, Robin, like, we do not, like, take Candace's advice. You know what I mean? Like, do, we do not need to know this shit. Like, keep this shit between you and your lawyers and, like, the judge. And Robin's like, he did not commit a Title IX violation. He didn't do any of the things, that, like, he's accused of. But it's like, but did he do everything right? You know what I mean? That's kind of, like, another component to the question. Okay, he didn't do the Title IX violation, but, like, did he handle the matter appropriately? You know what I mean? But, um, whatever. Then Lays head back home to change for some chicken shit bingo, whatever activity that Ashley has planned out. Candace says she's kind of confused about Robin's whole energy towards her, but she's gonna let her have her moment, she says. Um, after changing, Lays head out in two separate groups, and Robin is with Candace, Wendy, and Mia. And Mia and Wendy, they're, like, in the front, in, like, the front section. They push Robin and Candace, who are sitting next to each other in the back, to chit chat. And Robin says that she isn't down to reconcile because Candace is basically insinuating that Robin's commentary at the reunion was a factor in Juan getting fired. But Candace says, you know, I just don't think it's smart to talk about legal shit. Any legal thing. Like, it's not even about the specific case. It's just not, I don't think it's a smart idea. That's what she says, and I have to agree with her. Then Robin, she gets emotional really randomly. So you know she's like grappling with it. You know, she just seems fucking random. She flips like a switch, basically. She says that the college allegation is probably the worst thing they're going through, like the hardest part of the whole situation. She starts crying and she says, you know, her friends are trying to tear her down and make her the villain when she's done nothing to them. And Wendy and Wendy, Candace, and Mia, they all kind of try like consoling Robin a little bit. People online were like, oh, they should have fucking started recording Robin. She was recording fucking Wendy and Mia last year. But no, they're kind of trying to be a friend there because Robin is very hurt. Like she just flipped a switch, damn near. Started crying out of nowhere. Um, but yeah, that's the episode, damn near. It kind of felt like a bit of a transitional episode, kind of. It's kind of just, Get, setting it up for next week, if you will. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's it. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Thanks again. Bye.